Hi guys, welcome back for part two of our review. And in this part, we're going to jump to some numerical summaries of data. And I'm going to spend uh, th this video talking about measures of central tendency and measures of spread. Okay, so we're going to start. We're going to title this review lecture Numerical Summaries of Data. And I'm going to also put in parentheses here univariate. Okay, this is a word you may or may not have seen before. And what it simply means is one variable. So univariate means one variable at a time. Okay, so these are numerical summaries of data for univariate data, which is just one variable. Okay, and we're going to be talking about first measures of central tendency. Okay, so the most important measure of central tendency for us is going to be the mean. Okay, and the mean is something that we've all seen throughout our lives. Okay, this is the arithmetic average of a group of numbers. Okay, so we have symbols that are very important for us to kind of get very clear here. So we have the population mean, that's this Greek letter mu. And with it, we have the sample mean, which is x bar. I want you to clearly distinguish these two okay, for yourself. And um, understand the difference. Mu is the population mean. The population mean means that if you were to collect all the data from your population and then you were to average that those numbers that would be mu this is what we ultimately want to learn so this is our goal most of the time okay the problem is it's usually unknown okay and the reason why it's usually unknown is because of the same problem that we talked about in the first part of this review and that is that collecting data from the entire population is too time consuming costly and physically sometimes impossible so if I ha don't have all the data from the population how can I calculate the average okay so this remains for us as kind of a target, a bullseye that we want to learn about, our goal. Okay. So we settle for a sample, hopefully a random sample. If you followed the last uh, uh, review video, you, you, I motivated the purpose for a sample. We settle for a sample. From that sample, we can collect the data and we can calculate the average. So this is something we can calculate. This is the sample mean. This can be calculated. And furthermore, it serves as an estimate, or shall I say a point estimate, because it's just one number. For mu. Okay, so this guy is an estimate of this guy. This guy is what we really wanted to know, want to know about. Okay, this is the this is a nice number, one number that will give us a real good representation of what's going on with our data. So, for example, if our study was to study the uh, to learn about the GPA of, um, of this co in this college of students in this college then it would be really nice to be able to get all the students GPAs all 10 or 15,000 however many students there are their GPAs and then 
add them up and divide by how many people there are in that and we could use that one number as a really good summary of the sc entire school's GPA, right? But the problem with that, as simple as that sounds, the difficulty is in just collecting that data. So we end up settling for taking a random sample of students, enough, uh, as many as we have time to collect. So it'd be nice to get 30, 40 students and get their GPAs. There we can actually collect that data because it's a much smaller group of people. And then from those GPAs, we can calculate the average or the mean. We call that the sample mean to distinguish it from the population mean. Okay. And we're not going to take that sample mean and just say that the average GPA in this school is X bar. We know that that X bar was a sample of students. So we, at best, can think of this as X bar is a, a good estimate or guesstimate of mu. Okay, and so not equal signs, but squiggly equal signs. All right, so for us, we're gonna do a lot with the mean. So get this kind of piece that I've given you here very clear in your head, this, both the symbols, the terms, the, the concepts, and the reason why both of these guys exist, okay, and how they are related to each other, okay? So that is our most important measure of central tendency. Now we're going to move to measure of spread. So let me say measures, or measure of spread. So it's not only important to know where the center of the data is, which is what the mean, and there are other measures of central tendency. I'm focusing on the most salient points uh, that are, we're going to need throughout the semester. So not only is it important to know where the center of our data is, but it's also important to know how spread out our data is. So you could think of two kind of possibilities where we have each one of these points represents uh, let's say one observation so we have a sample of five so by the way sample size we use the lowercase letter n so there's five dots so my sample size is five so get also also refamiliarize yourself with that lowercase n is the sample size. But as I'm about to show you with a second sample drawing here, X bar would clearly be somewhere right here. You could think of the mean also as the center of gravity. So this line would kind of focus, uh, would kind of balance at this point. Okay. Then we have another sample here. Let's also keep this sample at sa size five. And let me show you what happens when the data is a lot more spread out. Okay, so we still have five observations, but as you can see, these five are a lot more spread out. Both of these have their center at the same general area, right under this middle point. These, both of these lines would balance at this point. And if we had the actual numbers for these observations, we would average them and we would see that they would fall right here, okay? You wouldn't be too surprised by that. So if we were to stop at just learning about where the center of this these two samples are, call this sample one and call this sample two, we would walk away thinking that both these guys um, are coming from a population that's identical, that there's not much difference between the populations that these two samples are coming from. However, visualizing this in the number line, you see that clearly there's a lot, there's, although they share the same center, center point, they uh, are telling a different story and that they don't come from the same population. Okay? This guy is a lot less spread out than this guy. Okay? So we, n we shouldn't only focus on where the center of the data is by calculating the mean. That's very important. But if we were to stop there, we would think that t two items like this are the same.
okay so we should also measure the spread and the measure of spread that I'm most interested in studying or reviewing this semester is the variance and what goes hand in hand with the variance is the standard deviation so no doubt you have seen these two guys before okay they are very closely related to each other so I present them together in fact one is just the square root of the other okay the symbols let's start with symbols here so we have for variance we have population variance is Greek letter Sigma squared so that's the variance if you were to have all the data from the entire population you could calculate this guy but just like the problem presented above we have to settle for a sample so we can calculate a sample variance and the sample variance will serve as our estimate of the population variance likewise with the standard deviation we have a population version sigma without the square <clears throat> and a sample version a sample standard deviation lowercase letter s without a square okay you could uh, you could think of these two as uh, basically uh, standard deviation is the square root of the variance or you can think the variance is the square of the standard deviation okay and you could uh, we're going to focus on interpreting the standard deviation here and so you could think of the standard deviation as the typical amount an individual observation varies from its mean so one more time the typical amount a observation differs deviates from its mean okay so it tells us it gives us an idea uh, a kind of a feeling of on average how far are are is the data from the average value okay so higher values of variance and standard deviation indicate more spread so a situation like this over here okay would have a larger variance than a sample like this because the data is much more compact here we would expect a smaller standard deviation and variance than here where the data is a lot more spread out okay uh, the lowest that uh, variance and standard deviation can take so let me say s squared and s the smallest they can be is zero and that will be in the very extreme case where there's no variation in the data which which will very 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 rarely ever if ever in this course see but the variance can go on and on up to a very 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 large number okay typically we'll see variability in data typically when we study things phenomena in nature and human be behavior there is variability okay the number of shoes you own varies from person to person the number of red blood cell cells in a uh, pan panda's body varies from panda to panda the stock price of a certain company varies from day to day there's variability everywhere okay so it's important for us to also study variability okay? again there are other measures of central tendency and other measures of spread these are the ones I want to focus on for this course okay okay so here were the numerical summaries of data uh, that we need to kind of focus on for this course um, and this was part two of our review for this course I'm also going to do a part three now and think of some more materials that will help you ease the transition into this course okay so till next time keep watching have a great day